And this talk uh, was shown with my student, Ru Mao Chen uh, and Jen Changnai, and also my colleagues, uh, Willy Sushiro, uh, Gomin Yang, and Imu. Uh, we are from University of Wollongong, Australia. But now, the second author is now working at National University of Defense of Technology China. Uh, let me quickly uh, revisit the signature definition and its skill model. Uh, a signature scheme is composed of four agreements in our definition, system parameter generation, key generation, uh, signing and verification agreements. Uh, in this work, we use capital, uh, we use the capital schema M to denote a signature or message M. Uh, in the, the standard security model for digital signature is known as existential unfortunability against Trojan message attacks. In this security model, uh, the adversary, oh, sorry, the challenger first generates system parameters and private key to the adversary. Then the adversary can adaptively choose message uh, for their signature queries. Uh, at the end, uh, the adversary wins the game if uh, it can uh, output uh, a new uh, uh, valid uh, four signatures on a new message uh, denoted by M start. In the corresponding uh, security reduction, we are going to solve a computational hard problem. So the simulator first uh, use a problem instance to simulate the system parameter, public key, and all curated signatures to the adversary. And we are use uh, the four signature to solve a, a computational hard problem. Uh, in the perfect uh, signature simulations, all signatures in the simulation can be classified into two sets, simulatable and reducible. And a signature is simulatable if uh, it can be computed uh, by the simulator. Because it's computable, such a signature cannot be reduced to solving a hard problem. And the second type is uh, reducible. Uh, a signature is reducible if uh, the simulator can use it to solve a hard problem. Because it's reducible, such a signature cannot uh, be uh, computed by the simulator because if it can be computed by the simulator, it means the simulator can solve the hard problem without the help, the help of the adversary. So uh, in a success uh, security reduction for digital signatures, it requires that all curious signatures must be simulatable and the forged signature uh, so must be uh, reducible. This uh, is the essential uh, conditions for a successful uh, security reduction. And in a security reduction, we use an, uh, an adversary's attack on a proposed scheme to solve uh, a computational hard problem. And that we have a time cost uh, denoted by capital T and a security uh, loss or uh, loss factor denoted by L. And we caught we, a deduction yeah, it's many uh, associated with the loss factor. A deduction is tight if uh, error is small or constant, and a deduction is loose if error is linear in the number of queries, such as the hash queries or the signature queries. And loose deduction is not good enough because we have to compensate. Uh, we have to increase the length of the security parameter to compensate uh, the, the security loss. So an inherent question is how to achieve title reduction for digital signatures. In the literature, we use a random sort, R, denoted by R here, in the signature generation. Uh, suppose uh, the space of the random number is R, we try to program the simulation in the way that for each message, okay, for each message, the random space R can be split into two sets. We call it a simulatable space and reducible space. And a signature or message M using R is simulatable if R is chosen from the simulatable space, or it will be reducible if R is chosen from the reducible space. So to achieve a uh, title reduction, uh, for all curated signatures uh, made by the adversary, the simulator try to pick R from the simulatable space such that there's no abortion during the signature query. So we have the security reduction is uh, successful if the forged signature is reducible. In this case, and we have the probability of successful reduction is depend on the size of such a reducible space. And for example, uh, the reduction is tied with loss factor two when 
the two sides, the GDW space and the semi network space are the same. And the condition of this kind of approach for tight type reduction uh, must use uh, random sorts in the signature generations. This is the condition. However, none of signature scheme allow to use a random sort. For example, unique signatures. Unique signature is a very special digital signature scheme. Roughly speaking, if sigma m and sigma m prime are both valid signatures of m, then they must be identical in the unique signature definition. So uh, in the corresponding uh, signature generation, we cannot use a random sort in, the, in this kind of signature generation because a random sort will produce a distinct uh, signature. Therefore, the approach using uh, a random sort for the signature generation, uh, sorry, using a random sort for title reduction is not suitable for uh, unique signatures. It means uh, we cannot use such an approach to achieve title reduction for a unique signature scheme. And suppose uh, this kind of title reductions uh, for unique signatures are the treasures that we are looking for. And this highway is the currently known security reduction we can program. So the treasure is at the end of this highway. And the question is, uh, can we reach that and find the treasure? Uh, <coughs> sorry. In the past uh, 15 years, there are three stop signs placed in this highway, showing that it's impossible to reach that. And the corresponding results were published in uh, Eurocrypt 2002, PKG 2012, and Eurocrypt last year. Uh, all these three works shows that uh, any security reduction for a unique signature or its <coughs> generalization called an efficiently generalizable signature scheme must have the loss factor error. And error are not the same in three works, but the up lower bound is QS. Uh, QS here is the number of signature queries made by the adversary. Uh, this is the long result in previous three works. However, we found uh, we can reach this thread by a, we can bypass, okay, just bypass this stop sign and reach the thread by a very tricky pass with the help of Groundhog. So, with Groundhog here, Groundhog uh, is a new security reduction for, <coughs> for digital signatures. Uh, we call it query-based reduction. In the security reduction for digital signatures, I mean in the traditional, in the traditional security reduction for digital signatures, if the simulator use a forged signature to solve, uh, use a forged signature made by uh, uh, computer from the adversary to solve an underlying hard problem, we call this is forged-based reduction. Why in the query-based reduction, the simulator will use hash queries made by the adversary to solve an underlying hard problem. The only difference is the way of solving an, an, an underlying hard problem. So the first one is the forge-based reduction, and here is query-based reduction. Actually, query-based query -based reduction is not a complete new security reduction because we have already used it to prove security for encryption scheme. Uh, in the indistinguishable security model and a computational hardness assumption. But there's, uh, I cannot find any work ever use this kind of query-based reduction for digital signatures. Let me uh, give you a simple example to explain this kind of query-based reduction. Suppose the system parameter is the parent group, uh, parent group uh, including a cryptography hash function uh, whose output space is the parent group G and the public key is G to alpha, and the security key is alpha. <clears throat> a signature here, a signature of a message uh, actually is composed of two BRS signatures here. The first BRS signature is the signature on message M, and the second BRS signature is the signature on M concatenating the first BRS signature, okay? Uh, this is the, construct, uh, the, 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 the constructed uh, signature. Uh, suppose uh, in a security reduction, if alpha is A and HM, in, I mean in the random oracle model, M, the, the hash queue on M is responding using G to B, then we have the first, the, the first signature is G to AB. So if the adversaries want to forge 
the signature on message M, the adversary must make the hash queries on M, and M can continue the first signature to the render local to complete the signature forgery. Otherwise, it's in, otherwise the adversary cannot have a language advantage to forge the full uh, signature. So we have the solution G2AB. Uh, we appear in hash queries because this one, we have been made it by the adversary. <clears throat> Actually, uh, our signature scheme uh, with a title deduction is quite similar to that uh, construction. Uh, the system parameter and the public key are the same. And in, uh, in our full uh, signature scheme, each message, uh, it's, uh, sorry, 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 each signature is composed of n plus one block signatures. Here, we call each one as a block signatures. Uh, um, for, for example, this, this one, we use sigma i to denote the first i block signatures. This one, the second signature is, is m concatenate the first block signature. And the second one is, uh, with this one, sigma m2, it uh, denotes the first two block signatures. For this kind of signature scheme, we can prove that the security loss is only 100 uh, for n equal to 25, even Q is as large as 2 to 50, okay? Uh, <clears throat> in the following <clears throat> presentation, I'm going to show that the security reduction for our simplified scheme with n equal to two, uh, we, we have the loss factor this one, two times the square root of Q for Q hash queries made by the adversary. Uh, in this kind of simplified scheme, each signature will compose of three block signatures, okay? <clears throat> So before the introduction, let me give you some preliminaries about our uh, security reduction. Uh, we try to define three types of hard securities made by the adversary: type zero, type one, and type two. Type, uh, how to uh, distinguish zero, one, two? Zero means the hard security input has message only, okay? Has message only without block signatures. And type one means the hard security input has a message concatenated its first block signature, okay? And type two means uh, the hash security input has a message concatenating the first two block signatures. Of course, the adversary could uh, make uh, other signature query not of in these three types, but it's okay because it's not related to, not used in the security reduction. And <clears throat> these are the three types of hash security definition. Then <clears throat> we also have, there are four cases of hash security could be made by the adversary on messages before their signature queries. For example, in the first case, uh, the adversary directly uh, chose a message M1, then goes to its signature queries without making any uh, hash queries. In the second case, the adversary directly uh, chose message M2, make its type zero hash query, then goes to its signature query. In the third case, the adversary directly uh, chose message M3, make its type zero, type one hash queries, then goes to its uh, signature query. In the last case, the adversary adaptive chose message M4, make all its three types of hash queries, then go to its uh, signature queries. And for the message to be forged, for example, M5, to forge the message M5, the adversary must uh, make all three types of hash query first before the signature forgery. Uh, for example, <coughs> Uh, the adversary could uh, make the following hash queries uh, before they are signature queries or signature forgery. Here, signature queries uh, or signature forgery are very important because we try, this one uh, are used to uh, make sure all these hash query inputs are computed by the adversary. Okay? And our, con our scheme is constructed in that way because uh, we want to make sure that this is the purpose we want to have. We want to make sure that for the same message, M, the adversary must make its type zero hash query first, then its type one hash query, then its type two hash query. Because type one hash queries must be able to compute the signature of type zero hash value first, and type two must be able to compute the signature of type one hash value first, okay? This is the 
some kinds of uh, purpose we want to have or we want to force the adversary to make, cure, make harsh cures in this kind of sequential way. And <clears throat> in the security reduction, the harsh cure numbers made by the adversary satisfy this kind of range. First, the number of type two harsh cure is at this one because the adversary must, uh, because we assume the adversary can forge a signature. So there must have uh, at least one type two hash queries made by the adversary. And because the, we assume the, we defined the number of hash queries made by the adversary is Q, so <coughs> the type two query is less than Q, okay? But here, the most important thing is that the number of type one hash queries is unknown. This one will be totally or adaptively uh, defined or decided by the adversary. Uh, this is uh, the code of our deduction. The public key is G to A. We try to reduce to the CD assumption, and A is the in the CD assumption, and so alpha is A. And in our security deduction, only one hard security will be responding using G to B. And most important, uh, this query is not randomly chosen, okay? I will introduce how to, how to choose this query. And all other queries will be responding using G to Z for a non that chosen by the, ad, by the simulator such that the corresponding block signature is simulatable or computable. And in this kind of reduction, the simulator will use a type one or a type two hash queries made by the adversary to uh, find the solution to the CTH problem. And which type is depend on the, the security reduction. But I want to emphasize that uh, whether it's type one hash query or type two hash query, uh, this one does not have to be related to the forge, uh, related to the forge signature or related to the message M star to be forged. Okay. Uh, so in details, uh, if a type two hash query for message M is responding using G to B, then we have a type one hash query for the same message for the same message contains the CTH contain the CTH solution because the type one hash query contains the first block signature, and this block signature is the CDH solution, okay? Similarly, if a type one hash, if, sorry, sorry. If a type one hash query for message M is responding using G to B, then a type two hash query for the same message contains the CDH solution. Because the type two hash query here contains two block signatures, and the second block signature actually is the solution to the CD, to the CDH problem. So uh, these are the high level description of our security reduction. Let's uh, have a detailed look. Uh, suppose the adversary can forge a signature and we know, this one is the condition, we know the adversary will make type one hard QA uh, no more than the square root of Q. Uh, so, firstly, the simulator will randomly choose k from the set uh, 1, 2, 3, 2, uh, square root of q, which should be secret to the adversary. Then the, ad then the simulator will wait for the case type 1 hash query from the adversary and respond to this query using G to B because this one is the condition, uh, or type 2 hash query must be made after layer type one hash queries on the same message. And the type one uh, queries is no more than square root of Q. So we have any uh, type two hash query is for the message uh, with the probability one over square root of Q. Uh, according to the forge assumption, one uh, type two hash query must be made by the adversary for signature forging. So we have the hash queries contains the CDH solution with the probability one over the square root of Q. For the second case, suppose the adversary will forge a signature and we know it will make type one hash queries more than this kind of number, square root of Q. Well, for this one, we need to change uh, the security reduction. Let k uh, be randomly chosen from the set one, two, three to Q. Here is a Q, uh, which is also a secret to the adversary. Then, the same that we wait for the case Type zero. Here is type zero queries uh, from the adversary, and we are responding to we are respond to this query using G to B. Similarly, all type one queries 
must be made after their type zero queue is on the same message. So, and the type zero queue is no more than on the queue. So we have any uh, type one queue is for the message M with the probability one over Q. Okay, and because uh, according to this assumption, more than square root of Q type one queues will be made uh, by the adversary. So we have uh, one of type one hash queries is for the message M with the probability. This one is probability is the number of type one queries times the probability one over Q. In this case, the hash queries contains the CTH solution with the probability one over square root of Q. So uh, we have, uh, suppose the adversary can forge a signature, and if we know the adversary will make uh, type one hash queries uh, less than or more than uh, the square root of Q, we can program the security reduction differently, okay? We program the security reduction differently, such that the success probability is always uh, one over square root of Q. Uh, we don't know how many type one hash queries will be made by the adversary because it's uh, adaptively decided by the adversary, but we can guess the range correctly, less than or more than with the probability one over two. So therefore, we have uh, this uh, final success of probability. This is the minimum success probability. And this is completes uh, the description of the security reduction. So with the gap between the impossibility and possibility, uh, for, for First, I would like to emphasize that the impossibility proof in the previous three works are, are not wrong, okay? They silently assume that all hash queries are efficiently computable. Uh, because all hash queries are efficiently computable, so only the forged signature can be reduced to solving a hot problem. Right, uh, in this given example, uh, we try to define some very special hash queries, like the type one and type two hash queries. These hash queries are not uh, inefficiently computable because they contain block signatures. And block signature is hard, it's inefficient for the, adverse, for the adversary to compute without the corresponding secret key. And then we use the hash queries to solve uh, the, the underlying hard problems. This is the gap between the impossibility and the possibility. And this work uh, implies, this kind of construction implies a generic construction of a signature scheme with a, uh, we can transform a signature scheme with a loose reduction to a signature scheme with a tighter reduction. And suppose uh, sigma m is a uh, with a loose reduction, we can construct a signature scheme with a tighter reduction uh, following our define or the, the proposed uh, structure, signature structure in this way. And this, this kind of signature scheme has a tighter reduction in the random local model, uh, when the reduction is programmed at this, uh, one of block signatures is programmed as reducible following our approach, and all the other block signatures will be programmed as simulatable. In this, in this way, we can let's have a tighter reduction. But the condition is that this one must be in the random local model only. Okay, uh, conclusion. Uh, we propose the First, a uh, unique signature scheme with a tighter deduction. Uh, this kind of work bypass uh, the impossibility given in this uh, street conference. Uh, this kind of construction also implies uh, a generic approach for a tighter deduction uh, without a random sort in a, in a signature generation. The condition is that this kind of our scheme construction and this kind of transformation must be in the random local model. So it's there. Okay, about the brief story of this work, I also believe the impossibility results private, is impossible prior to this work, and this kind of query-based direction, this kind of idea came to my mind at 3 a.m. in July of last year. But I found that this kind of counterexample uh, was very hard to, con to construct. And so uh, we have uh, finally uh, the first scheme, uh, on our scheme was for successfully constructed in December uh, last year. So it, it took us a very long time to find this kind of counter, counter example. Although it seems easier uh, for me now. That's why uh, we spent lots of time in finding the reason why we can bypass 
like these kinds of impossibilities. So about this work, we would like to uh, thank Yannick being the shop of this work and Deepo for helping identify the gap between the, the impossibility and possibility and also the review of Crypto uh, 2017. Yeah, that's all. Thanks.